So what are the parasites that we will be talking about in this lecture? Basically, we have four parasites or coccidians or circular protozoans, cryptosporidium, cyclospora, cystoisospora, and toxoplasma. Now, there are other parasites which affect the immunocompromised host, such as strongyloides, leishmania, and plasmodium. But these will be talked about in other lectures. Okay, now, please take note that these three are very similar in nature. And as such, when, when you are reviewing for, when you will be reviewing for these three, try to compare and contrast the similarities and differences of these three amongst or against each other. Now, toxoplasma is a whole new different uh, story. We begin with cryptosporidium. So what is that? So it is, again, a coccidian, which is not uncommon in first world countries, meaning first world countries would have significant cases of cryptosporidiosis. cryptosporidiosis. Okay, as you can see, water purification plants, water parks, water treatment plants, and another water park here. So you have a clue where you get cryptosporidiosis. It is recognized as one of the most common causes of waterborne diseases. And it is seen in recreational water facilities such as the Mall of Asia Water Fountain, uh, uh, Jacuzzi, man-made waterfalls, uh, Adventure Cove in Singapore. Uh, well, the most common ones would be, of course, jacuzzis and swimming pools, even chlorinated ones. As you can see, cryptosporidium is highly resistant to chlorine. Drinking water, of course, including your so-called blue mineral water, the one um, advertised by this guy, Gabby Concepcion, <laughs> for those of you who still know him. And, of course, epidemics come from water treatment plants. Food, and food washed with contaminated water, of course, would also contain uh, cryptosporidium. So I won't be talking about all the points in each and every slide. I would just want to highlight specific points. Okay, so cryptosporidium parvum is the species which is zoonotic in nature, coming from animals to humans, while hominis, on the other hand, is transmitted from human to human. As you can see, the cysts are circular in nature, thus they are called coccidian. Infective stage is sporulated or a cyst. This is a type of a cyst. And what happens? It breaks up inside the small intestines more commonly and also in the lungs, releasing sporozoids, which would then invade your epithelial cells. Please take note, this is the habitat inside the host the epithelial cells inside the small intestine. Now, inside the small intestines, they will undergo both sexual and asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction happens through black, producing your daughter merozoid. So your schizot is the mother producing your daughter merozoid. Sexual reproduction makes use of your micro and macro gametes and during fertilization they will produce sporulated oocysts. So what is the significance of sporulated oocysts? It is already sporulated meaning it is already infective. Okay? So even even minutes after even minutes after uh, fertilization it will be already infected. Now, there are two types of cysts, your thick and your thin-walled cysts. Your thick-walled cyst goes out through the stools, and your thin-walled cyst infects the host again. So it is capable of internal auto-infection. So this is the very simple circular life cycle of your uh, cryptosporidium. You ingest it. It develops in your intestines, you expel it through stool, and someone else drinks it or ingests it. Now, again, inside, uh, let me search. 
inside the intestines, it will undergo both asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. Okay. Symptoms are usually asymptomatic, sometimes diarrhea, but in immunocompromised patients, intractable diarrhea is the usual symptom. Diagnosis is through microscopy. You have to look for the circular cyst, circular cyst using specific stains. So these are highly fluorescent stains. This is a jargesis. You'll learn about that some other time. You can also use enzyme immunoassays, especially in the field in epidemics. They use enzyme immunoassays like this one to detect positive results in population groups. You treat it using antibiotics, nitazoxanide and paromomycin. For the mechanisms of action, please refer to pharmacology. I might ask, I might not ask, but definitely pharma will ask. According to the CDC, to prevent it, you wash your hands properly. Wash it with soap and water. Sing, uh, Happy birthday twice, so that, so that will be the duration of your washing your hands. Practice safer sex, meaning avoid. Avoid or try to avoid anal oral sex in that order. As you can see, this is a fecal oral transmission parasite, so anal oral sex will be high, will be at, put you at high risk. And of course, always clean up before engaging in sexual activity. Avoid touching farm animals and avoid touching the stools of pets. So basically, try to avoid farm animals, especially those who, who roll around in their stool. And of course, stool is the carrier, the vector for this. So try to avoid them as much as possible, even in pets. Avoid swallowing water when swimming. Close your mouth while swimming. And of course, wash food properly and drink clean, safe water. So how do you ensure clean and safe water? Rolling boil for one minute, not just warming for one minute, not just allowing it, plugging the water heater for one minute. You allow it to roll boil for one minute. Store in the refrigerator and clean your ice tray, please. With soap, not just with liquid water, okay? And for those of you who have water filters, try, do, try, please do try to look for these specifications over here. This ensures removal of the cyst of cryptosporidians, especially in uh, high-risk countries, such as the Americas. Okay, so that's it. Next topic.